I'd like to talk to you today about the balance between wisdom and faith. In this time of challenge, in this battle against the coronavirus, we've been sequestered for a while. We've kept social distance. We've not had services in our building. The time will come soon when we will start to gather back together again. And I know that there are some who haven't agreed with the choices that we've already made. They would like to see us back in church already. But that's why I want to talk to you about the balance between faith and wisdom. Often people will ask me, I want to know what the will of God is. The will of God is that we walk in wisdom. There are times when he preempts that. There are times when he does miracles or directs us to do something that's rather outrageous. But we need to be very careful and sure we are hearing clearly the voice of God. Otherwise, we just end up making fools out of ourselves and proving that we haven't heard from God. Now, I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to go into detail. I could tell you about times God spoke to me very clearly and did some dynamic things. Where our building is located, that piece of property, there are so many testimonies that go into God's guidance and provision in bringing that about. I say that just so you know, I'm a spiritual guy. I, I listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. I have done some of those outrageous things. I've taken some risks simply because I believed it was what God was telling me to do. In this particular case, I believe that God would have us to follow the guidance that is given to us from those who know more than we do about viruses and these kinds of things. We will get back together again. We will obey the guidelines. If we have to stay so many feet apart for a little while, if we have to rearrange the furniture a bit, I'm willing to do that. I am not afraid of this virus. I'm a healthy guy. I I happened to read an article today on what makes people most at risk to the virus. You know what the number one thing that they listed is? not being afraid of the virus. As I've said in an earlier clip, we're rednecks. we rednecks. We're not afraid of stuff like this. I'm proud of my redneck heritage. But there's a difference between faith and wisdom. Sometimes what we call faith is folly. And faith most often lines right up with wisdom. Did you know that in Israel, the people who have had the most trouble with the virus are the most orthodox of Jews? They're following their faith, not the guidance of the governmental officials. And as a result, a higher percentage among them are dying of the virus than the general population. They think that it's a proof of their faith. Do you remember when Jesus had been fasting for 40 days out in the desert? One of the temptations that the devil put on him was he took him to the very pinnacle of the temple and he said, jump, cast yourself down because the scriptures say the Father will not allow you to dash your foot against a stone. Let's see if he comes to rescue you. Prove that you are the Son of God. Do you remember Jesus' response to him? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What that means is, I can trust that God is going to protect me when there are things coming against me that I can't see. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But I am not to test God on that. 
like run out in front of a car or jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. If you're just trying to show off or prove something, he'll let you fall. He'll let you get smashed by that car. If you're going to prove that you're not afraid of this virus, you're making yourself vulnerable. And here's, here's the twist to this. If it was just you, go ahead. But we're linked in this together as a community. For me, I need to be concerned about my wife who has a compromised immune system. We, as a body, need to be concerned about some of the older ones in our congregation. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but some of the older ones are some of the bolder ones. They're really not afraid of this virus. <laughs> so we have to protect them by following the guidelines. I'm here to tell you, that's not unspiritual. That's very spiritual. Love thy neighbor as thyself. I wear a mask when I go to the grocery store. I do it as a witness. I want my neighbors to know I care about them. You know that wearing a mask doesn't protect me from the virus. It just protects everybody else from any germs I happen to be carrying. So I'm saying to my neighbors, I care about you. I'm not saying, I'm afraid of the virus. I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> no. I'm saying I care about you. And as your pastor, I care about you. Some of these things we're not aware of. D did you know that men are more susceptible to a, a bad reaction to the virus than women? More men die than women do? They don't quite know why. African Americans are more susceptible to the dangerous side effects of this virus or effects of this virus. There's a lot we don't know about. Some people who appear very healthy die from this virus. So don't get too full of yourself and don't get overconfident. Do trust in the Lord with all your heart and trust that even if it, even if one of those germs lands on you, he's going to protect you. But don't tempt the Lord your God. Don't go looking for the germs. Don't be cavalier about it. Set a good example for the people around you and trust that the Lord is going to see you through. Another thing the article talked about was to keep eating healthy. I know we're past our fasting time, but lots of fruits and vegetables. And I wanted to give you a tip here. Lately, I've been roasting my vegetables. While I was pumping gas the other day at Wise Market, a little screen was on the pump. It was showing me how to do it. In a bowl, you take your vegetables. You add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and then whatever seasonings you like. I like a little salt, a little pepper, and a little bit of garlic salt. You mix it all together. You put it out on a cookie sheet. Bake it at 350 degrees. I like to stir it around every 10 minutes or so. And I find that around 25, 30 minutes, they're nice and tender. You can, if you like yours a little al dente, you can take it out sooner than that. If you like them softer, you can leave it in a little bit longer. Uh, I also like to slice up sweet potatoes and put a little olive oil on the, my uh, cookie sheet and then put them in the oven, turning them uh, after about 15 minutes, turning them over, and then uh, another 10 minutes or so. They're so soft and they're so good. Uh, just, just a cooking tip, but you want to up the amount of vegetables and fruits that you're eating, 
And uh, that's just good for your diet all the way around. Stay healthy, stay strong, stay close to Christ. Hope to see you again soon.